What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and today we're going to be talking about the new rewards coming to Warzone's mid-season 3 update, some exciting changes, and the latest controversies. Definitely stay tuned, but before you jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also let me know in the comments, how are you guys feeling about the state of Battle Royale and Resurgence in Warzone 2.0 as of right now? Do you feel like it's been a drastic improvement in both game modes as opposed to where the modes were a couple of weeks ago? Let me know if Season 3 has really changed your perception of Warzone 2 as we know it. But the first thing I wanted to go into is something we talked about on the podcast briefly but I haven't brought up in a video yet, and that's the fact that the World Series of Warzone Stage 1 ended up getting postponed due to AI crashing the server. Now, then a couple days after that, the World Series of Warzone got delayed yet again because of stability issues. So, does that right there tell people that AI needs to go away inside of Warzone 2 specifically? Keep them in DMZ, but remove them from Warzone 2 altogether. I'm not opposed to Strongholds and Blacks. I think they offer some really cool opportunities and replayability inside of regular BR or even Resurgence surgeons but if it's getting to the point where it's affecting stability to where the world series of warzone has to be postponed that to me is a bit of an issue so hopefully they figure that out but leave all your best thoughts down below in the comments should ai remain in warzone 2 whatsoever or should they just keep all that technology inside of dmz exclusively now speaking of the world series of warzone they also removed that from private match options and the reason why is because people out there were getting a glimpse of a feature that isn't ready to release just yet and that is a reconnect feature so this is honestly massive and i want to guess that it's going to affect all of Warzone 2, not just Battle Royale or Resurgence, to where eventually, even in DMZ, you'll get an option to reconnect to a match you might have disconnected from, maybe your power went out, or your internet reset, or something strange happened with the crash, and you'll be able to reconnect within like a span of 5 to 10 minutes max. That would be awesome. Obviously, they have to find a way to balance that to where exploits aren't created, to where people out there are cheating their way to a free victory, or doing something shady. They'll probably figure out a way to balance that, but that is massive. If anything, I know it's important for Warzone 2 BR and Resurgence to have that kind of feature, but if anything, I think DMZ is the mode that desperately needs a feature like that because of the high stakes, because of the fact that you can loot and extract with certain items. How frustrating is it when you have an amazing match with DMZ and you disconnect for a random reason or something weird happens to where the entire server crashes? That would be fantastic to have a reconnect feature to make sure that you didn't lose everything you just worked for in that specific match. But yeah, imagine dropping a 20 bomb and right before the final circle begins, you disconnect randomly, but you're still online and can reconnect within a span of 45 seconds. That would still work out, and in my opinion, Opinion would make all the difference for Warzone 2 and would also elevate the mode above where Warzone 1 ever was. Reconnecting was a feature that everybody out there wanted during Warzone 1's era and we just never got it. So now that we're in a new era of COD, I think now's the best time to introduce this feature. Now, as of a couple of days ago, I was invited to a creator briefing with Activision and the studios in regards to Season 3 Reloaded and more specifically Warzone 2.0. Not much was able to be asked in regards to multiplayer or DMZ, but in terms of Warzone, I wasn't able to get an answer as to what happened to Massive Resurgence inside of Almazra. They haven't really mentioned that all that much. I know they removed it from the game a little while back because of some issues dealing with the final circle. Not sure what happened there, but also when it comes to the reconnect feature to kind of follow up on that again, during that phone call, they did say that that feature would first roll out into Warzone Ranked and then later globally for the entirety of Warzone 2, probably in a future season. I'm going to guess that feature is going to end up launching with Season 4 and then, you know, with updates after that, they'll eventually add it to every version of Warzone, not just Ranked. They'll also add it to regular BR, Resurgence, DMZ, but I'll keep you guys posted on that one. Now, in terms of what's left for Warzone 2 in Season 3 Reloaded, it's just essentially what is left on the original roadmap, and Season 4 isn't that far away, right? It's going to be the second week of June, which, again, is not far away from right now. So, uh, before we know it, we're going to see uh, marketing for our fourth season, and we're going to be seeing some other massive surprises for Warzone over there. But in terms of our mid-season 3 update, we have perk packages, deployable buy stations, and our Gulag entry kit. Essentially getting things out the way that need to be added back from Warzone 1, things that we thought were going to be a staple in Warzone moving forward and would have been available at launch in Warzone 2, back in November, these things are finally rolling out as of right now. So, better late than never, I suppose. I'm hoping that it does spice up the gameplay in ways that you guys are probably hoping for, so that the mode does feel a lot more replayable across Almazra and even Ashika Island. Now, there's a list of improvement highlights for Warzone Season 3 gameplay that was not posted in the recent blog post, but it was mentioned during our creator briefing. So, as they went ahead and said, while queuing for a match, players will not be interrupted while in most menus. Equipped perk packs, when I'll show on the HUD in the lower right, AI difficulty at Strongholds has been reduced. Redeploy drones on Almazra now have an increased vertical boost, reduce the number of waves in a mortar strike, thank god, players cannot ping enemies through smoke grenades anymore, enemies who kill a most wanted target will now earn the supply box reward, players will now see a separate oxygen meter on the HUD when underwater, then kill streaks will show their icon on their in-world tablet for easy identification, the buy station cursor now will consistently always start on gear, and ammo caches now display up and down arrows to show their elevation, while on an active contract, other contracts will also show on the tech map. Hopefully though, a lot of these 
pages to make their way over into DMZ and consider this a little bit of an overall in terms of gameplay for our mid season three update. Now they also released a graphic detailing what's releasing with Warzone ranked during the launch of season three reloaded. And like I said in a previous video, I'm totally cool with them delaying the new DMZ map, Koshai Complex. They haven't really confirmed whether or not it's a new map or just a point of interest update for Almazra, but the wording does suggest that it's going to be something that releases in season, not necessarily at the launch of season three reloaded. Again, I talked more about that in a previous video linked down below, but we have a lot still coming to Warzone here on May the 10th. So with Warzone ranked, as you can see here for our graphic, talks about skill divisions, the ranks, your earning of uh, skill ratings, and even the rewards you can also earn by playing the experience. As a reminder too, this is completely separate from the rank play that Treyarch also did for Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, a completely separate system with a separate set of rewards. As they also confirmed in the phone call that we were in a couple days ago, there will be many competitive integrity features. You must be level 45 minimum to unlock access to the mode. There will be balancing on squad backouts, match canceling. There will obviously be suspensions and penalties. Uh, there will be skill rank forgiveness for those unfortunate scenarios. There will be demotion protection and division stickiness. And of course, there will be no inclusion of fire sales, jail breaks, or even restocks during the duration of your matches of Warzone ranked. They've also turned off Gulag tokens, redeploy tokens, assimilation, multi-circles, and even champion's quest. I mean, they could have kept champion's quest because I'm sure it'll be very difficult to win five games in a row of Warzone ranked. But again, these were things that were mentioned in that phone call we were in a couple days ago and some things that were also mentioned in the dedicated blog that also came out in regards to this ranked experience. But in terms of rewards you could also unlock by playing Warzone ranked, there are quite a bit and some are season exclusive as you guys are about to see. So for rank five, you get a vehicle skin, rank 10, an animated emblem, rank 15, a weapon sticker, rank 20, a weapon charm, rank 25, animated emblem, rank 30, a win tracer gun screen, which is awesome, rank 35, weapon sticker, rank 40, a large weapon decal, 45, a weapon charm, and rank 50, an animated emblem, calling card, and even an operator skin. Again, these are also separate operator skins from the ones that have been released inside of ranked for the multiplayer, but there are, of course, season three exclusive rewards, including a pro issue blueprint, a camo, and even a weapon charm. There will be kill and assist challenges, placement challenges, and new rewards coming each and every season. Obviously, Warzone 2 will get support for many years to come, even when Modern Warfare 2 is out of cycle. That's going to be a different story, though, for Modern Warfare 2 ranked multiplayer or even DMZ, but when it comes to Warzone 2 exclusively, this will have a ranked mode to hopefully get support all the way up until the next Black Ops game comes out in 2024. Now, there will also be end of season skill division rewards, top 250 rewards like we see in multiplayer, and the unique one of a kind emblem and calling card for the number one overall player inside of Warzone 2 rank. Now, for the sake of clarity, ranked is releasing in beta during season three reloaded here of Warzone 2.0. It'll probably be out of beta by late season four, maybe season five at the latest, but the party size is limited to trios only on Almazra. Hopefully, Sheikah Island gets support later. They didn't really mention that on the phone call either. It's only BR. Public event restrictions we already went over. There's going to be vehicle restrictions like no heavy choppers, restricted gameplay elements. We went over that. Uh, buy station inventory adjustments. And then no flinging rocks at people in the Gulag either because that is just mean, as it says here in the blog post. But there will also be seven standard skill divisions. But because of the fact this is coming out during Season 3 Reloaded, wouldn't really be fair to then reset everybody as soon as Season 4. So what they're doing here is that with play Players beginning at Bronze 1 at the start of Season 3 Reloaded, because it's being launched mid-season, this first rank play season will be shorter than all subsequent seasons. Players will earn a skill rating based on match performance, specifically placement kills, assist, kills by your squad. The SR earned for kills, assist, and squad kills is increased based on the number of squads remaining. There are also deployment fees deducted from each player's SR total. The higher the player's skill division and tier, the higher the deployment fee. At the end of the season, though, players are knocked back to the lowest tier 1 division below where they ended the season. For example, a gold three player at the end of season three reloaded will start season four at silver one while diamond two will go back down to platinum one however the highest division at which players can start a new season is diamond one so anyone in crimson iridescent or top 250 will be brought back down to diamond one at the start of a brand new season but the end of season divisional rewards will be available starting in season four but we want to emphasize that if you at least finish in crimson season three reloaded you will start at diamond one for next season again that is because of the fact that it's releasing during a mid-season update and season four is just going to be around what two three-ish weeks tops after this launch of this reloaded update but as they clarify the end of season divisional rewards here for season three will be available starting in season four but they want to emphasize that if you finish in crimson in season three reloaded you will start at diamond one for the next season 
But they said they cannot wait to have our incredibly dedicated, skilled, motivated, ambitious, passionate, and determined competitive community dive into ranked play and begin the journey with all us developers on shaping Warzone 2 competitive play. So for those that loved the Iron Trials LTM from Warzone 1, consider that a bit of a beta for what is now about to be Warzone 2 ranked. If you guys are worried about TTK and movement, things like that, that has not been addressed whatsoever and likely won't be tweaked. But I'd be surprised if Sledgehammer's new COD that comes out this fall has the health and the movement that you guys are looking for and whether or not that'll then transfer over into Warzone 2 later. Maybe it's just right now while Warzone 2 is synced with Modern Warfare 2 and while that game's in its prime, that's why we have the restriction with TTK and moving. Maybe it's going to stay the same while Infinity Ward is still in charge of Modern Warfare 2, but once Sledgehammer or Treyarch become in charge of their CODs and then they're running the Warzone 2 integration, maybe then we'll end up seeing some of the tweaks you guys are looking for, but as of right now, we just might not get that with the launch of Warzone 2 ranked. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the brand new rewards coming to Warzone 2 inside of Season 3 Reloaded? How are you feeling about rank and the other new features that are also set to release for all game modes? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.